And this private key will exist on the server, and the server will use this key to sign all of the URLs that we're using for images. Then we need a public key that we're gonna store in CloudFront, and it will use that to verify the URL. In my previous videos, I set up a web application that stores images in an S3 bucket, then distributes those images over a CDN using CloudFront. In this video, I'm gonna continue where I left off with those videos and show you how to create a signed URL for the images that you're serving through CloudFront. And this gives you a little bit more control over who can access the images and how long they can be accessed for. So right now, if I go into the web app, I can create a new post which uploads a new image to an S3 bucket and will store information about that post in a database. So right now I've just uploaded a new post, which means I should see an object in my S3 bucket. And I have a CloudFront distribution connected to this S3 bucket. So when the client gets the images, they're actually being served up over the CDN. And we can see the URL for the CloudFront distribution right here. And this is how we're getting the images. And this URL just gets the object using the object's name as it appears in the S3 bucket. And we just put the CloudFront distribution domain name in front of that. And this is a fine way of serving up images, but the the URL for this image will always be the same. It will always be this URL. So anyone that has access to this URL will be able to access this image for as long as it exists on CloudFront. And there's also a chance that people could start guessing image names to try and just find what images exist in our CDN. And a lot of web apps work this way. So if I send an image in a private Discord message to someone, and then I copy that image URL and make a request for that image, I am just getting this straight from Discord CDN. This URL will never change. I'll always be able to access this image. In fact, anyone in the world could access this image as long as they have the URL. And this won't expire. It will just always be accessible this way. Even though I sent this in a private message, it is accessible to any person or bot indefinitely as long as they have that URL. If we compare that to something like Instagram, Instagram signs the image URLs. So let's take a look at what one of the URLs from Instagram looks like. I'm just gonna select one of the images here. I'm gonna copy the URL here and paste it into the browser as before, and I can still access the image in the same way anyone can, but this URL is signed. So let's take a look at what this URL looks like in VS Code. I'm just gonna break this down a little bit so it's easier to see. But here are all the parameters of the URL. It is a signed URL. And that means that this URL will change depending on who makes a request for the image. And these URLs will also expire. So although I can use this right now to request the image and anyone can, in a few days, I won't be able to use this URL anymore. So if I share this with someone or if a bot goes and scrapes Instagram, it won't be able to continue using the same URL. It will have to reauthorize with Instagram and get a new URL every few days after this expires. And this makes it a little bit more difficult to share these images, and it makes it impossible for another web app to come along and scrape Instagram and create a database full of their images using URLs because the URLs will be constantly changing. So signing URLs gives us more control over who can access images and how long they can be accessed for. So let's take a look at how we can start signing the URLs for our CloudFront distribution. So I already have my CloudFront distribution set up right here. I did this in a previous video and I'll leave a link to that in the description. And currently all the objects in this CloudFront distribution are public. So we're gonna change that and we're gonna make sure that they can only be accessed if a URL is signed using a private key. And then the CloudFront distribution is gonna have a public key that it will use to authorize the requests. So before we can actually do anything with the CloudFront distribution, we need to generate an RSA key pair. And to do that, we're gonna use OpenSSL. So on your local machine, you're gonna to have to have OpenSSL installed. And if you don't, just Google how to install it for your machine. On my Mac, I think I just brew installed OpenSSL and that was all I needed to do. But since I already have it installed, all I need to do is run the command to generate the private key. And that is OpenSSL gen RSA out private key.pm 2048. So that's gonna be a 2048 bit private key that we're creating here. And I'm just generating this in my servers directory, but it really doesn't matter where you create this key. 
So that has now been created. And if I take a look at this, we can see there's a nice private key and you shouldn't ever share this with anyone, but I'm just gonna delete it after this video. So I don't mind sharing this with you. And this private key will exist on the server and the server will use this key to sign all of the URLs that we're using for images. Then we need a public key that we're gonna store in CloudFront and it will use that to verify the URL. So the next thing we need to do is run this command. And I'll include all of these code examples in the description, but this will create a public key from the private key. So we'll end up with a private and a public key. And now if I take a look in my website's directory, I should see there's my private key and there's my public key. So again, the private key will exist on the server. Make sure you don't commit this into source control. This is very private. It is a secure piece of information, but we're gonna put this on the server. It's gonna use this to sign the URL and we need to upload the public key to our CloudFront distribution. So the very next thing I'm gonna do is go back to CloudFront and upload this public key so that we can use it with the distribution. So in the CloudFront dashboard, if you scroll down on the left panel here, there is a section for key management. And what we wanna do is first create a public key and then we'll use that to create a key group. So right here, I'm gonna create a new public key. The name of the public key, uh, this is my InstaSAM demo app. So InstaSAM demo public key. Uh, and then here I need to paste in the public key, including the begin public key and end public key parts. So I'm going to just copy this in VS code and paste this in here and then click that create public key button. And then once that's created, we need to create a key group. And this is what the CloudFront distribution is actually gonna use. So right here, I'm gonna click create key group and have a name for this. So Insta Sam demo uh, key group. And then here we can select up to five public keys, which can be really handy if you wanna rotate keys. Right now, we're just gonna use this single key. So I'm just gonna select that and click create key group. So now we have the key group, we need to associate this with the CloudFront distribution. And we can do this when we initially set up our distribution. So if I went in here and I created a new distribution, as I'm going through the settings, I can just add that in. But since I already have my distribution created, I'm gonna click on that, go over to behaviors, select the current behavior here and click edit. I'm gonna scroll down here to the restrict viewer access section because this is where we're gonna restrict access to only signed URLs. So I'm gonna check yes here and then leave it as the recommended trusted key group selection. And then right here, we just need to select that key group that we just created. So now if I scroll down to the very bottom and save these changes, I won't be able to access my images from CloudFront anymore unless the URL is signed. So before I click save changes, let's just verify this. So if I go to this tab, this is the image that I loaded earlier. If I refresh it, I can still load this image. I can see that it's coming from CloudFront. But as soon as I save changes here and restrict the viewer access, I will no longer be able to access those images directly unless the URL has been signed correctly. So now if I try to refresh this image, if I try to get this image again, it shouldn't work anymore because I haven't signed that URL. We can no longer access the images directly without a signed URL. And now we're gonna need to head over to the node server because we need our server to sign these URLs for us. So if we look at the current server code, we can see that we're getting the posts from the database and each of the posts contains an image name and that's the name that appears in the S3 bucket. So a random string like this. And we're using that image name to create the CloudFront URL just using the domain name of the CloudFront distribution. So we need to just change the code right here. So instead of creating a URL like this, we need to create a signed URL using that private key. And in order to do that, we need to install one of the AWS SDK libraries, which is the CloudFront signer library. So I'm gonna npm install this. And now back in the web app, I need to import the get signed URL method from the CloudFront signer library that we just installed. And this function is gonna manage all the signing for us. So I'm gonna come down here where we're actually creating the URL and I'll comment this out for now. And we need to call the get signed URL method with an object that contains all the details to sign the URL. So the first thing we need is the original URL that we're signing. So this is the URL where the image exists on CloudFront. So we're gonna put that in here. Then we can specify when this URL expires. So this bit of code is saying 60 seconds times 60 minutes times 24 hours times seven days. So if we wanted it to expire, for example, in 60 seconds, we could just write that. So if we wanted it to expire in 60 seconds, we could just write it like that. 
uh, or we could have it expire in an hour or a day. So maybe we'll have this expire after one day. Then we're going to need to specify the private key, which is the key that we created earlier. And we're going to put that in an environment variable. And we'll also need to specify the key pair ID, which is the ID of the key pair we created in AWS. So I will be using environment variables here. So I'm just going to let this auto complete. And I'm going to call this uh, cloud front private key cloud front key pair ID. So I'm going to need to insert both of these into my environment variables file. So the key pair ID is the ID of the thing that we created in CloudFront. So if we go back over to that public key section and I select that, I just need this ID right here because this is the thing that represents the public key in AWS. So I'm going to copy that ID and put that in here for the CloudFront key pair ID. And then for the private key, we actually need the contents of that private key. So if we check in here again, I have that private key right here. I'm just going to copy and paste everything in here and put that into an environment variable. And I'm going to make sure that I surround this with double quotes and make sure there's no extra spaces here. So begins and ends right there. It's just the private key. So I'll save this file and head back over to the server here. I'm going to save this. And this thing is going to return the URL that we need to use to request a new image. So I'm just going to store that onto my post object that I'm sending back down to the client because then it's going to use that to request the image. So I've saved my server now and we could actually see this if I make a curl request quickly uh, to my back end. And that failed because we have an invalid policy. So expires is not expires. It's supposed to be, um, let's take a look date less than. So I'm going to use date less than here. Hopefully that's the only mistake I made. Let's try requesting again. There we go. Okay. So here is the post that is coming from the server. Here's the image URL that I'm creating. Image URL is the return value of the get signed URL function. And that is this huge signed URL right here. So this is still requesting the image from CloudFront, but now the URL is signed and it's going to be verified by CloudFront and we'll only be able to get that image using a signed URL. And in 24 hours, this will expire. So I won't be able to request this image anymore. If I want to get this image, I'll have to be logged into my app and request it through my server. So if I go back and refresh my front end now, everything should still be working. But if I take a look at this image, the way it's requesting that image is through the signed URL, not the public URL, because it won't work unless it's signed.